Hey guys, in this tutorial we're going to be going over the battle system again. We're going to be adding a few more features for the turns, so we can go through each of the turns and each of the phases. But for now we're just going to make the options selectable for what our character had when they enter battle, and being able to reset those depending on um, what we select, and we'll be able to go back and stuff like that too. But before we get started in the tutorial, I'd like to thank the guy who donated $25 to me. Um, that's my first donation so far, so I'm very happy about that. Um, I'm accepting donations all the time. If you go to my main channel, um, the bottom link on the sidebar is to my PayPal for donations, if anybody else wants to donate. N none of that's required. All these tutorials are for free, but it would be nice to get other donations, even if it is a dollar or... 10 cents or whatever you guys have to offer. Um, it'll help me in making this my full-time job, even though I'm pretty much doing this full-time currently. But yeah, it would still help me out a lot. I'll leave the donation link in the description below as well if anybody it was thinking about donating. But yeah, we'll get back to my tutorial now. So we'll just go and we'll jump into our code here. And we're going to be adding the battle system a little bit more in this. So what I did was I created a new variable for enemy turn activated. So this is telling, th this is mainly just a simple variable for keeping track if it's our enemy's turn. Turn 2 is a part of it, but when we call that in the update function, we don't want it completely looping through a million times and it would constantly be calling this a million times. So at the end of this phase, we'll turn turn 2 back to turn 1 and we will change this back to false so it will be can be activated again the next time it's the enemy's turn but in here we're going to be just going over the different attacks I don't know if I'll I'll probably make an enemy 1 turn, enemy 2, enemy 3 and then it'll jump back to player turn and it'll reset the phases and all that stuff but for now it's just going to be the player's turn and they have the stuff they can select, the enemy is not going to be able to do anything yet because we're going to have to set up the different attacks for depending on what enemy is spawned and that will be for future tutorials. But for now we still have our attack, item, and run. And so if in battle equals true like we set up before. So in battle is pretty much just telling between if we're walking around or if we're in an actual battle with an enemy and that makes the script so to activate it even though the script is disabled oh wait now nope I think I switched the script to the main so it might only it might still show up just on this camera though so yeah so pretty much we did variable other script and we called that through there and in here we did, yep, turn one. If it's turn one, so this is the, p the player's turn. Phase zero, and that's for the different things you can select. And depending on which one we select, it'll go to a different phase. So phase one will be the attack select, phase two, item select, phase three, um, run select. Now, something to note about the on GUI function if these are true, they will show up on the GUI. If not, they will not show up on the GUI. So during phase one, all these will be shown. If phase phase change to anything else at that time, so if it changes to phase one, all this will be deactivated and it won't be shown on the GUI. So if we chose phase one, only this will be shown. None of this other code in this on GUI function will be shown unless it has a specific variable. So if we select attack, these two will be shown. And this will be our slice attack and back. Now back will be included in each one of these different phases just in case the player wants to go back to this phase which is set at zero for the selection. So if at any time you select back it'll go back to that phase. And for everything else, um, if we select attack, health, potion, it will go to our enemy's turn because turn two is for our enemy and we'd probably want to reset the phase to zero but we're not going to be doing that at this time so yeah 
and then phase three is our runaway. Now we're doing something a little bit different with this. Um, phase equals zero, we're just resetting the phase. That's what I should probably put in each of my other um, things. Just because when it switches back, it needs to be at phase zero. So I could probably copy this right now. Since it's going to our enemy, we'd want to reset the phases. So when it comes back to us, we would be able to um, select something. So our GUI would pretty much be set back to the basic. And yeah, so phase reset other script dot embattle equals false. So we're switching our cameras back to be being able to walk around. So main game in battle, if it equals true, then we have the camera for walking around. I mean, if it's false, camera for walking around true, it means we're in battle fighting. Because, yeah, in battle equals false. And then we have another back. And then, like I said before, update. So if turn equals two, enemy turn activate equals false, which it's always false, right? when it begins, but we'd want to switch that to true. Now in here it's enemy one turn B and this is just a way to print in the council for whatever turn. So we could put in some other debugs just just to give it like a basic scenario. We could do enemy one attacked. And then Let's just let's just pretend for now that the turn is over. We would want to set turn equals one. Because yeah, we're gonna want to reset our turn back to our player's turn. And I think that's all we'll need. But for now, I'm just showing off the basics of how to set up the attack system a little bit more. In the next tutorial, we're actually going to be getting the player to attack, the enemies to attack. And then to expand on that even more, we'll do random prefabs for the enemies, have them spawn, give them different attacks and abilities, and expand from there onto our game. We'll create some shop systems and different stuff like that. Um, we also have to create the reward system so after we kill an enemy we want to do the XP and the items and gold or whatever you want to give your player at the end so yeah we have the basic basic setup for now I'm gonna go show you guys how this all works pop up the council real quick so we're gonna go run around it's gonna randomize and we we're already in battle now we have our three enemies set up here they don't do anything right now but yeah we can go to attack slice and back, item, health potion back, run, run away and back. So if I simply hit attack, I hit slice, enemy one turn began, enemy one attack, and then it went back to my turn because these popped up again. Normally these wouldn't be shown, but they are shown again. So yeah, we could go because item won't do anything, so because we haven't implemented a health potion or anything like that, I still have to give these enemies health and everything. So let's just say we're gonna run away. Run away, back out here. We could walk around a little bit more. And now in the future for the runaway, that's going to be a random, so not all the time we're gonna be able to run away, because that would be way too easy. Normally, there's like a 50% chance or higher that you can't run away, and the enemies will be able to attack you again. Now, we could implement um, other potions that might make it so you have 100% to run away. But, yeah. So, yeah, we're back in battle. We can just run away again if we want. And we can keep doing that. We can attack. Oh. I guess that's a bug we need to fix. Um, I don't think I reset something, so it won't allow me to select anything. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Okay, since we didn't change that to false, it won't be able to activate again.
Let's see if that fixes it. Since, yeah, since we attacked, ran away. So we'll attack, slice attack, back, slice attack. See, now it works perfectly fine. It does the enemy attack, and it brings back up these bars. So yeah, future tutorial, I'm going to cover all the stuff I talked about. But for now, that's about it. I'm probably not going to going to include the code again for this project just because we haven't programmed everything we need yet but hmm I guess I could include the code just in case you guys want to implement it so I'll I, I guess I'll just toss the code in there